You know, everyone always talks about how to set up or configure Plex. They'll even tell you about what Plex is and what it does. Well, that's all great and everything, but it works off the assumption that you actually understand how it all works. Well, if you don't, or if you just want to fill in a few gaps of missing information, then you're in the right place. Plex is a powerful, full-featured media server designed for ease of use and cross-platform compatibility. It's easy to set up, use, and to share with your friends. Once set up, you can watch your media in your living room, on your laptop, your mobile phone, tablet, Roku, Fire TV, Xbox, PlayStation, just to name a few. On top of that, if you share your libraries with your friends or family members, they have access to the same options that you do. To do this, Plex has three main components. The first is your media server, a simple installation that can be on your main computer, a separate server, or a regular network attached storage device. Now, there are pros and cons to each one of these options, so if you want to learn more, you can check out my video here about how to start a Plex media server. The second is the client used to play the media. While you have many options like the ones I mentioned earlier, you also have access to the Plex web player. This lets you watch your media from just about any internet-enabled computer. This option, of course, is assuming you aren't blocked through a firewall like you would on some corporate networks, so don't be surprised if it doesn't load up at work. The third piece connects everything together, the Plex servers. Now, if you only want to watch your media in your home, then you don't actually need to log in to the Plex servers. I'll explain more on that in a bit. Plex allows you to make a free account that you can sign into with your media server and your client devices. This connects them so they can send and receive data between each other. Without this middleman, your client wouldn't know where your server is and thus wouldn't be able to get any of the media off of it. The Plex account is free, but you do have an option for a premium account that gives you a few more features. I will link that more information about that in the description. So you got the basics. Now let's talk about how it all works. In my example, you've installed your Plex media server on your personal home computer and you want to watch your TV shows at work on your iPad. Let's say you're on your lunch break. Starting at the client, you launch the iPad Plex app. At first load, it has no idea who you are or where to look for your server. So, assuming you've already created your Plex account, go ahead and log in. Doing this connects your iPad with the Plex servers. Now, let's go ahead and jump back a bit to the night before when you installed Plex on your home computer. After installation of the Plex software, you start the server and tell it where your TV shows are stored. Then, you log into Plex through the server. This actually connects your new home server to the Plex servers. As long as you keep your computer turned on and the Plex media server application running in the background, which is automatic by the way, then the Plex servers will always know how to connect to you. A little side note here, you may need to set up port forwarding to get this to work. Don't worry, I have a video for that right here. Okay, let's bounce back to the iPad at work. Now that it's logged in, the Plex servers forward the internet location of your home computer that is hosting the media server. Your server then sends a list of libraries to your iPad. Browsing this list, you select TV shows. Now your server bundles a list of your TV shows with a set of images and short descriptions. You should have a pretty good picture by now about how your iPad talks with your server. Keep in mind though that Plex servers really only introduced the two initially. Now most of the communication is directly between your iPad and your own media server. What about the magic though? I'm talking about the video coming from your server to your iPad. That's what it's all about after all, right? Well, when you find the video you want to watch, the Plex app on your iPad knows what it needs to show it to you. And by that I mean it knows the resolution it can handle, the audio format it can decode, and the file type it can read. It sends the request for the video along with the list of requirements to your media server. That's where the magic of Plex comes in. You see, Plex media server will take those requirements and do something called transcoding. This transforms your media from whatever format it's in to whatever the iPad needs to play it. Transcoding can be a resource hog. So to learn more about it, you can click here for my video on how to master your own Plex Media Server. In it, you can learn how to plan for transcoding and what you should expect. Transcoding is a necessity for the versatility of Plex because almost every device uses different formats and or resolutions. It lets you enjoy a slightly lower quality movie on your iPad that still looks great on your big screen TV. This leads into a common question that I get. Do you have to leave your computer on all the time for this to work? Well, Yes and no. Yes, for you to request media files from your server, you do need to have it online and available. 
If it's turned off, you will only see an error on your client saying no media service found, if you only had the one. On the other hand, Plex does have a premium feature that uses the cloud to serve files. You can see more on that in the video here, but keep in mind that it does have its drawbacks and limitations. If you don't want your computer on all the time, you will have to look at other options, like maybe a separate computer to act as a standalone server, or a network attached storage device that you're going to leave on all the time anyways. But it's easy to plan out what you will need if it's only you using it. For example, you won't need it while you're sleeping, so you can turn it off at night and only keep it running during the day. I think that covers everything for remotely playing your files, so now let's take a look at your in-home experience. The basic principles are the same. Your client, which could be an Xbox, PlayStation, Roku, etc., will request media from your server much as it would if it were in a different location. The main difference is that since it's on the same network as your server, being logged into the Plex servers or even having an internet connection at all is not required. Something called DLNA, or Digital Living Network Alliance, allows devices on the same network to discover each other automatically. Other media server softwares like XBMC rely on this completely for media discovery and playback. Plex just kind of takes it a step further by integrating their own servers as an additional middleman for off-network playback. Because you are on the same internal network, chances are you'll have a faster connection between your client and your server. This means you have a chance of not having to transcode your media and the quality might be better. Now, I'm not saying that anytime you watch your media away from home that your quality is automatically going to be lower. I only mean that if your internet service cannot provide enough speed to give you full quality, the transcoder will lower down for you. If you want to learn more about starting a Plex server or even perfecting one, you can check out one of these videos here for more information. As always, if you found this video useful and or liked it, click the little like button below and don't forget to subscribe.